welcome to this video from in 28 minutes thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms udemy safari and pact let's welcome our lead instructor ranga rao karanam welcome to this video we would be talking about introducing yourselves in a interview Introducing yourself is one of the very few open questions that you would face in an interview. How do you answer that? One of the most important things is to differentiate yourselves from all other candidates. It's very important that by the time you end your introduction, you grab the attention of the interviewer. You set the tone for the interview. Let's see how I would introduce myself in an interview. I'm Ranga Rao Karnam. And I love consulting for startups on microservices and cloud native architectures. I'm the author of a book called Mastering Spring 5.0. It explores the new features of Spring 5.0. It helps you build microservices with Spring Boot and helps you understand all the advanced features of Spring Boot as well. We also talk about Spring Cloud in that specific book. Before I get into the wide range of experience that I have, I would like to touch upon some of the achievements that I had in my previous technical roles. In my last role as a senior architect at a large technology firm, I implemented a Maven archetype for generating microservices and components. This was based on Spring Boot and cloud native application architecture. This included several features like multiple layers, having examples of unit tests, integration tests, it had integration with Sonar. It had all the monitoring built in. So the idea was basically to create a Maven archetype, which would be useful to generate microservices. And whenever a new microservice needs to be developed, we can use the Maven archetype and generate the microservice. More than 20 different microservices were generated by using this Maven archetype. And this helped in standardizing the microservices architecture for our specific enterprise. One another achievement I would like to highlight is implementation of something called a request cache which generated savings over one million dollars in just 2016. There was a framework which was a combination of both the domain model plus something like a JP, something like a Hibernate and there were flaws in this specific framework which we fixed and we enhanced the caching in that and it resulted in performance improvements of more than 50 percent. This was an application which had like 200 instances which were running at peak load and the infrastructure which was needed to support this application during peak load went down by 50%. I was involved in creating REST API standards and also creating a framework to adhere to these standards, as well as I've implemented several standards around unit testing. In my previous role as a controlling architect for a major bank, we implemented a unique architecture based on reusable web modules. We call these business modules and this reduced the amount of effort to develop new sales applications by more than 75 percent we also implemented several reusable components actually more than 50 reusable components different types of archetypes access components domain models authorization components and helper components which helped in contributing to the reduction in effort code quality is one of the top concerns in the it services industry and I proactively designed a program called Programming Excellence. This was a hands-on program covering component-based architecture, test-driven development, refactoring, four principles of simple design, solid principles, and also modern practices like pair programming, DevOps, and things like that. The idea was to introduce a programmer to all these facets in a couple of weeks of hands-on learning. I had a wonderful experience designing this program as well as executing this program for a few batches. We had significant improvements in productivity as well as code quality. I kind of think of myself as a programmer, coach and an architect in that specific order. I love programming. Actually, I've started with procedural programming with Power Builder, VB and C. This was a long time ago. And then I moved into object-oriented programming with Java. I've also done a little bit of declarative styles of programming with XSLT. I've been working on functional programming with Java 8, Scala, and Python. As a programmer, I love to follow test-driven development and have great unit tests. I think these are essential tools to make sure that the load-level design is really, really good. I've worked with a wide range of frameworks, starting from Spring, Spring MVC, Spring Boot, Spring Cloud, and I've done a lot of unit testing with a wide range of frameworks like JUnit, Mockito, and unit testing. 
and I also have a little bit of experience on the front end frameworks like Angular and stuff like that. As an architect, I have a wide range of experience starting with developing applications which did not really have any architecture at all to applications which were using SOA architecture as well as microservices architecture. I've also been on several architecture boards setting standards for application architectures. How do you choose frameworks? How do you choose design alternatives? How, what kind of coding standards do you need to follow? As an architect, I love focusing on creating a lot of reusable components. The recent Maven archetype I implemented to generate microservices was a great example. This really helped in standardizing microservices and the approaches to unit testing, integration testing, monitoring, logging, auditing across the organization. As an architect, I really believe that ensuring a consistent flow of information starting from business to the developers and testers is a key to success. I ensure that my vision for technical architecture is shared across with all members of the team. On a personal level, I love hiking and I've hiked extensively in Alps and Himalayas and I play a lot of cricket and tennis. That's some of the most important things I think you would be interested in. Okay, that was kind of a little long introduction. There was also a chance that the interviewer might interrupt you during some of the parts of the introduction. But I just wanted to give you a fair idea of what are the different kinds of things I would love to talk about when I'm introducing myself in an interview. If you look at how I introduced myself, it covered the entire range of my experience. It covered what I think about certain important topics, what my beliefs are. And I also gave a personal touch to the whole thing. The idea was to be completely different, take a very different approach rather than taking a year-by-year -year approach or a role-by-role -role approach. So the idea was to set the tone and kind of grab the attention of the interviewer right at the start. I would love to know what you think about it and what are the things you do differently. Until another video from In 28 Minutes. Bye-bye. In 28 Minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online, and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. The question is, what do you want to learn next? We are building solutions to help programmers at all levels. You can learn programming with our awesome courses on Java, Python, and JavaScript. You can learn full stack development with REST APIs and microservices with a wide range of frameworks like Spring Boot, Node.js, React, Angular, and Spring Cloud. We have 200 plus videos to help you start your journey from a programmer to a software architect. We have videos to help you learn frameworks, industry trends, including things like microservices, learn the best practices in architecture, design, and code quality. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.